Welcome back everyone, Staring from Staring Gaming here. Today we're going to be running the Vortex Pinnacle. This was a dungeon that you get access to once you unlocked flying for the area. So basically it became more or less a max level dungeon. And as you can see, the Vortex Pinnacle is basically the home of many air elementals. We're going to get started and start some chain lightning. And they do like to charge you. Now I come here to farm what you just saw, Volatile Air. This is actually a nice place to farm that when you need those. Especially if you can solo it, <laughs> it means you get it all. Now this Lurking Tempest here will actually disappear once you get in his close enough to his LOS or line of sight. See? Vain death, which basically means you really can't kill these guys because they'll just keep going to hide. I need to target something first. My high level lets me one shot him. Gotta love a shaman, just AoE from a distance. Now as you can see, we have an item here called the Magical Brazer. As you can see, it's re <laughs> related to the archaeology. Basically, you have one of these hieroglyphics. You can pop it in there and you would get your buff for the rest of this run. Too far away. Now, as you see, our first boss here is Grand Visor Burton. Now, they have an ability called Cyclone Shield. It's basically, on the outside here, there will be Cyclones. You want to be inside so you don't get AoE'd. Also, you don't want to touch them, as you can see. It reduces your movement, attack, and casting by 85%, and you really don't want that. Now, Storm Edge... It's what happens to you if you're outside those cyclones. So please, if you're doing this, make sure you're on the right side. Lightning Ball is just basically a normal attack. Now Summon Tempest is a heroic ability. Now you saw Lurking Tempest there tend to disappear when you look at him. During this fight... She'll be summoning up these periodically and they'll just cast a Lightning Bolt on you. Filthy beasts! Your presence in Skywall will not be tolerated. As you can see, these are the Cyclones. Now if you step outside them, you'll actually take damage. My level's high and then I'm not even getting hit by it. And once she does her next ability, and as you can see, there's the Tempest. And this is when she cracks the shield. Basically, you want to make sure where you're at standing when that happens. Also, as you can see, I have two quests active for this area. One is to loot her heart, and the other one is to slay the final boss. Now, as you see, there's a golden orb right here that I just looted. The achievement is to actually loot five of these. They actually appear in different areas per run so you got to keep your eye out and sometimes they'll appear on the next boss area
Now, as you can see, there's two more golden orbs right there. The problem is, you don't need to worry, because if you do fall off, you'll just get swept up in a little cyclone and put back into the nearest checkpoint. And if that happens to be the beginning, depending how far you progress, there might be a slipstream at that area for you just to hop in to get to. Now these Howling Gales, to stop them, all you have to do is do some damage to them, and they'll stop. Because I can actually one-shot them, they just disappear. Now you can jump out and loot it, you'll just fall down. The Imperial Assassins, the only ability you have to be careful of is when they do their little, uh, I guess you call it, phasing skill, where they can reduce damage. And as usual, this is just going to get sold to a vendor, because there's no profit in it. It just drops commonly here. Now the dragon here, you need to pull him out of the pool he summoned. But I can one shot, so I don't have to worry. But he'll summon a well of healing there. You need to pull him out of there. He'll just constantly heal and heal and heal. And at the level you'll be put in here to run, you're not going to be able to out get the healing. Now, as you can see, there's two more orbs in this area. Sometimes they do spawn in this boss, and you have to use their, this boss's mechanics to actually reach them. Now, as we start, this guy here has some abilities called Call the Wind. During the fight, you'll have wind blowing in multiple directions. One at a time, though. Like, But as you can see, if you're upwind of him, you actually get a boost in movement speed and attack speed. But if you're downwind, you get negative effects. His chilling breath, basically, he just goes after a random person. And a cone, a 120 degree cone, breathes frost damage. So you gotta be careful. Lightning blasts can be deadly. If you're not standing on his platform, you're gonna get blasts of a heavy nature damage. Now the twisting wind is here on Heroic. Now, as you're fighting him, as you can see, here's the twisting winds. Now, if you actually want to loot these orbs, you need to use these twisting winds to actually get up there. And as you can see, I'm downwind of him right now. I want to show you... Basically, as the wind changes, sometimes this will cause them, but basically if you want to grab the orbs that are in the air, you need to be close enough to them to do this, to get launched up and grab them. The funny part about this boss too is though, people like to farm him because he actually drops them out himself. My luck is he didn't drop it, as you can see. I don't have luck with mounts, no matter how much I farm. <laughs> now the next part is just pretty much a bunch of mobs. Pretty much a little gauntlet of mobs. You just gotta kill them all to get to the last boss. But when you come up against these... I forget what one... The co these Tovar type mobs. You wanna focus on these Adepts because they are the healers. And if also if you're running with the wind, you'll get this little buff known as Zephyr. It'll just get you up there faster, more or less. As you saw, we passed more orbs. There's multiple golden orbs here. You just gotta get five of them. 
Now this little triangle of lightning energy is actually a grounding field. Basically, if they are, anyone's outside that's hostile targeting you with spells, it just gets redirected. You won't get hit by it, most likely. Now, the real ones that I personally think are a pain are these Skyfall Stars. You need to DPS them fast or they'll just start lining up your group. They spread out over a little bit. They'll start bombarding you with arcane damage and it, it sucks in my opinion. In my opinion, I think Shaman and Pallies are good for running old stuff, because... Well, and Paladin can tank and the Shaman can just light up things in multiple. Now, as you saw, I did target the Adept. Their attack was redirected, but unfortunately, because Chain Lightning likes to jump, they had their... My primary attack got redirected, but not the effect of Chain Lightning. So you can use those two types of attacks to your advantage. But as usual, you always do want to try to either CC the healers or focus fire them down. And we're coming up to the last boss, but there's one more group of Skyfall star, uh, stars. And honestly, people tend to run ahead to go fight them. I kind of, I tend to wait for my group because some full size, oh, I can soul this. They're going to get lit up unless they can heal themselves massively. Now this is the final boss. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Now he has an ability known as Unstable Grounding Field. We'll show you that ability, but when he starts forming that, everyone and I mean everyone needs to get their butts into that. Now, the Supremacy of Storm, if you're not in that when he chases that, you're dead. Chain Lightning's just like my Chain Lightning, more or less. It just jumps the players. During this fight, he does summon up Skyfall Shards. To be honest, we never really focused on those. We just tried to burn him down. We just kind of let the healer deal with it. Now, on Heroic here, he has an ability called Static Clean. Basically, it immobilizes you to the ground. Now, there's actually a counter to this. When he casts it, you just need to jump before... As When he finishes his cast, just make sure you jump before he finishes it, and you don't get hit by it. There's actually an achievement with this that you, no one in the party gets hit by that. It's just, like, easy. It's like, when he's casting it, jump. When he finishes his cast, as long as you're in the air, you're immune. I did say I was going to show you, but it's pretty obvious when you see him. You'll see a giant. He'll just shoot out lightning out of his hand, forming the triangle. You just got to run into it. And the thing is, he'll teleport above the triangle, and you can just DPS him while he's there. While he's doing his little cast phase. It works out. But uh, this has been uh, the Vortex Pinnacle. This is Saren from Saren Gaming asking you to please like and please subscribe. It really would help me out. Also to go check out my Twitch channel. I got some videos up there now and I hope you guys could choose to follow. Because I'm actually aiming to get affiliate with them right now. Well, I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed.